You're welcome today again to my YouTube channel, Simplified English Grammar. In our last episode, we we're talking about nominal cases. We saw that nouns can function as subject, can function in the objective position, can function in the vocative position, a positive position. And today we'll be concluding with the last function of the nominal case, which is genetive case. What is genetive case? Before then, if you have not liked our page, please go ahead, like this page. It's for you. Subscribe. Click on the notification bell to get notified each time we drop our content. Our content drop every Tuesday and Fridays. I'm looking forward to seeing you as we continue in today's class. Genetive case. The genetive case refers to when a noun denotes possession, source of origin, manufacturer, or authorship, and association. I'll repeat it again. The genetive case refers to when a noun denotes possession, source of origin, manufacturer, or authorship, and association. The genetive case is formed by adding both an apostrophe and an S to a singular form of a noun or by adding only an apostrophe to a plural noun ending in an S or by adding both the apostrophe and an S to a plural noun which does not end in an S. All this long grammar, I'm going to exemplify it and it will get clearer as we take some examples. Follow me. Here in this example, we have Martha's pen. Martha's pen. Martha here is a singular noun. We add the apostrophe and then an S to show, to show possession, to show possession and then the pen. Number two, again, we have a singular noun, boy. Then you put the apostrophe, an S. Number three, we have men's shoe. Men's shoe. Here, men is a plural noun. A plural noun that does not end in S. So, we add the apostrophe, add an S, and then it becomes a genitive case. Number four, we have girls. This girls here is a plural noun. Girls, just an apostrophe because it ends in an S. Girls, bags. Finally, here we have sisters, plural. Sisters, plural now are just an apostrophe and we have it as sisters day. Again, we have compound nouns that exhibit this genetic case. A compound noun in the genetic case is treated as a single word. Note it that a compound noun in the genetic case is treated as a single word. It is indicated by adding an apostrophe and an S to the last word of that compound noun. Let's take some examples to illustrate this compound noun that exhibits genetic case. So here we have sister-in-law's mandate. Remember I said it should be treated as a singular noun. Sister-in-law, this is the last word of this compound noun, laws. So you have the apostrophe and you have the S. Sister-in-law's mandate. Secondly, we have mother-in-law's prayer. Mother-in-law's prayer. Finally, here we have director general's order. Director general's order. Genetic case. Showing joint possession will be treated in such a special way. If the genitive case indicates joint possession, the apostrophe and an S is added to only the last word of the peer or group. But where it denotes separate possession of thing by two or more persons, add the apostrophe and an S to each of the nouns. Did you get this? I'll repeat it again. If the genitive case indicates joint possession, the apostrophe and an S is added to only the last word 
of the peer or group. But where it denotes separate possession of things by two or more persons, add the apostrophe and an S to each of the nouns. Let's take some examples. In these examples, the first two here signifies joint ownership, joint possession, while the last two indicates separate possession. Let's take them. May and Baker's company. May and Baker's company. Here, remember, I said when it is a joint possession, the last name carries the apostrophe mark and the S. So here the company belong to May and Baker. Similarly, number two, we have Abigail and Janet's room. This room belong to Abigail and Janet, joint possession. But on the other hand, we have the last two here signifying separate possession. J.P. Clark and Dennis Brutus poem, separate possession. Here we talk about J.P. Clark having his poem and Dennis Brutus having his. Finally, here we have the president and the governor's jet. The president has his jet and the governor has his own jet. Separate ownership. Again, I want to thank you for finding time to view our channel. We love you, we like you, we want you to continue viewing, but don't forget to subscribe. Go to our YouTube channel, subscribe on Facebook, like, follow. We are so grateful to have you. See you in our next episode. I tell you in our next episode, we'll be starting with another part of speech titled Pronoun. You wouldn't want to miss it. It's going to be an exciting time.